So, all right, let's go to the very, very nitty gritty. My, my, my favorite yeah. discussion, my favorite um, um, talking points with my artists. At what point, are there any favorites you have? Like when you look at uh, your work and you go through your incredible history of fantastic pieces you, you made over the time, is there something that really like for yourself, for your, you know, that just got to your heart and you say, that's a piece yeah. I really love. I, I think in all honesty, um, in every series, I have my favorites. Okay. Uh, very often, they have to do with the inspiration, with the process, with the philosophy behind it and how it all comes together. And where actually Glass gives me exactly that or even more than what I could hope for. And there are pieces that, that I've done that I consider my, my favorite. And you know what's interesting? <laughs> very <don't> often, <laughs> very often those pieces don't get sold for years. I have the same same problem and i'm already i'm i'm starting to look at pieces and says i'm only going to choose pieces that i dislike because sometimes you're so connected to a piece but you know what i sometimes i came to the conclusion out of my perspective sometimes obviously you know the artist well you know the material well you've seen so much you have a different connection maybe that some people don't yet understand because they haven't followed you on the same path and that's a very good remark you made. That is, I think that's very, very true. And I, I that, that's if I go if I go back, right. you know, to that moment where where we went from these large blown double growls and presented the first twenty one icebergs, I had a handful of people that came up to me and said, "I still like your blown glass better." <laughs> oh God, yeah. Four of those five people, within the next three years, bought a cast piece. They were ready to make the transition. So that transition that you're talking about, where I already am in a different mindset, in a different series, in a different inspiration, in a different vo vocabulary, vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> vocabulary vocabulary <laughs> uh, in a, in a in a different uh, um, story so to say you know uh, reading a different book you know or, or writing a different book in in that sense i am ahead of of the collectors because i i change so much that i see collectors are just like uh, is this you <laughs> they, they ask me, they say, is, is, this, is this your work? And I'm wondering if they say that because they don't like it or whether they're just flabbergasted because it's so different. I, I like to share now, can I say something to this? Because it's just, before yeah. we lose a connection to that, I find that really interesting because I think that's why my perspective of the gallery is also important because we carry the story for the artists. So it's... I, you know, got to bring the pieces closer to the, to the client and to the public and the understanding of yeah. the people. And that's a process and some things develop. But I also noticed for myself is that um, once I started with something and I started to get more progressive and, you know, dare to do things that, uh, where you are worried that the client might not understand it, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's a challenge, but it's a very important, but it comes through communication. But one thing I definitely found, and this is something you said before, that's why I wanted to, sorry that I interrupted you. Um, that's fine. Is that uh, most of the clients that come and say, I don't know if I like this piece because I remember, you know, you did some glass blown piece or you had glass blown. Piece. You know what? You've actually, I found more clients come back or buy or be interested when they say, I don't like it. Then from the people that come in and say, I like it because yeah. it's done with, because actually the act of kind of finding discomfort in the piece because they're used to something else shows yeah. it's doing something inside. So that's when it's my job to tell them, says, well, look, you know, this used to be this and then it went through this and it became that. And then they're like, wow. And then you, you've created a dialogue. Sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to put that in because I have no, exactly no, no. the same experience. 
you, you make a very good point because I think there's, there's a couple of things. Um, I find that there are collectors who like it, that the work is recognizably a certain artist. Yes. So they like that you kind of have very specific language that they can recognize. Um, but at the same time, there are also collectors who love the fact that I change a lot. I have collectors who have 20 of my pieces because they've been collecting for 25 years and they love that I'm doing different things every time. Right. And, and so they, they, they stay interested. They keep coming to exhibitions and, you know, some of them keep buying. And I think that that is phenomenal that people are willing to actually follow my craziness, if you like, <laughs> and and just understand. But you have creation, being creative to me means that you keep changing. Change and creativity to me are, are very connected. Yeah. How can something still be creative? If you don't change, if you keep making the same thing, that's not creative to me. Absolutely. 